Talk about taking a pause and, and maybe wanting to pinch yourself. Passing Dominic Hasek for the all-time wins leader, European-born goalies. This was somebody you grew up idolizing. Yeah, Dominic Hasek and Patrick Roy was big guys. Uh, I really liked their style and hopefully I get the chance to play Hasek. But... I loved watching him growing up. It was him and Patrick Roy and Dominic was unbelievable. But I remember uh, passing his wins record and, and that was also, I think, a moment for me. The first few years playing here, I came home to visit my parents. Where I grew up was still the poster of Dominic oh on God. the wall. They didn't change it. It's changed now. It changed after a few years. But I remember, you know, they kept it the same way. And it was, I could see that the journey back then. And Hendrik Lundqvist becomes the all-time leader amongst European-born goalies. How about that? Yeah, congratulations. What a career he's 2017, had. 2017, you win a world championship yeah. um, with your brother. It was more than just a win. Thinking back of where we started and, and we supported each other so much throughout our career. Mm -hmm. Wow, just thinking about it now makes me... Almost like closing the circle a little bit, right? Yeah, it, it was. We haven't played together for 12 years. So I go back and join them in, in Germany that year for the tournament yeah. and we win. I just remember, you know, standing there together. It was such a cool moment. Played through some pain in that tournament too. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I remember. <laughs> Are you still paying the price? <laughs> no, but it was, yeah, I, I did get hurt in the semifinals. I wasn't sure if I could play the final. I tried it the next day, we played back to back and uh, put some a shot in my knee just to take away the pain. Uh, and I was like, okay, this might work. And then the game comes what, around six o'clock and it works perfectly until halfway through the game and it started to be very painful. Uh, but there's no way I'm, I'm leaving this game. It's a, uh, I think it was a one, one game against Canada. Oh my goodness. So we will go into overtime, he ends in a shootout. You felt a responsibility to deliver a win too. The way that you came over there, joined the team, everybody was probably saying, hey, Hank's here, we're good now. Yeah, we're no, it was definitely pressure. Uh, Which is probably what drives you to play through pain a little bit, right? The knee's a long way from the yeah, heart. Yeah, pressure, but you know, most of it comes from the inside. It's not what other people think or yeah. believe or this should happen or it just comes from in here and I wanted to win. And I knew, you know, this was a great opportunity for, for me and my brother to do it together. Yeah. Uh, we had a great team. There was a lot of emotions there. Michael Jordan in his uh, documentary, he was talking a lot about how he'd have to get himself up for certain things. Did you ever feel like you had to fire yourself up and manufacture emotion or did it just come naturally? I don't think I ever had to fire myself up going out to a game. Like I was That's always good. nervous. I was always, it was always that important. Yeah. I think it was more knowing to bring it down instead of bring it up. I think that was my you challenge. You felt like you were getting too high, like <laughs> yeah. bring it back down. Yeah, this is where I, I mean, need for to bigger be. games, yeah. it was more about finding that, you know, sweet spot where you're not too tense or, or yeah, no, I, I never really felt like I had to come up with things to get myself fired up because it, it was enough to go out there and knowing that, you know, you had 20 guys relying on you. Mm -hmm. And if you're off, everybody <laughs> will know. <laughs> I'm not gonna be that popular in the locker room anymore. <laughs> How I remember your career, it was always being healthy always being consistent and always being at a high level. How do you explain that to somebody? What's your secret sauce? You know, <laughs> if you were to share it with a youngster, how would you, how would you share that with them? How would you articulate that? Well, I think playing in this league is a lot of work and there's a lot of commitment. A lot of players can play good here and there, but to be consistent over a long time, it's, a huge commitment from yourself, from the inside. Mm -hmm. The hours I spent mentally to prepare for every game, if I sat down and started calculating, the amount of time I've spent throughout my career thinking about the game, 
how to perform, how to play. I did it because it was important to me. It was a commitment I made. And no matter what was going on around me, in the end, it was only one thing that was that important to me that I would commit to that much. And it was the game of hockey. And it's hard, you know? It's not it's, for everybody. It's not. The more you commit, you know, the bigger reward, but it's also harder when you fall. Yeah. If that makes sense. It does. You know? You I, had to get yourself to that level to play at that level, though. Yeah. But I, I, it meant so much that it was not hard for me to make that decision to commit like that in practice because it was so important to me. Mm -hmm. It was only one way for me. Since I was six, seven years old, it was like, there's only one way. I don't know why it was like that, but there was not a choice. What do you think it's going to feel like the moment the jersey gets raised up into the rafters? Are you going to be able to keep, <laughs> keep it together? <laughs> We'll see. Uh, Every time you go to that building, it's going to be there. I remember, you know, playing a lot of those games when, you know, Ness and Graves and a lot of these guys, I was on the ice and uh, they were tiring their numbers. And it was, it was a cool moment to be part of that, mm -hmm. to see them and to experience it, and realize how much they meant for this organization. Um, so I don't know how I'm gonna feel. I know my closest friends, my family, my entire family will be here. And that alone will make it very special mm -hmm. for me. And then to have all the fans. Uh, Good luck getting through the speech, buddy. Yeah, I know it's, uh, <laughs> I realize it as I'm talking, I'm not gonna get through it. <laughs> what do you think's next for you? And where do you find that same passion now that the time on the ice is over? Yeah. And can you find that same euphoria after hockey? I mean, what's next for Henrik Lundqvist? What's next is I want to be happy. That's the most important thing to me in life, be happy. And what really makes me happy, my family, friends, to do things that inspire me, to meet people. Mm -hmm. um, I've been so committed to one thing almost my entire life mm -hmm. is to play hockey, stop a puck. I've been so committed to it. <laughs> I'm now looking to do a couple of different things, not just one thing, mm -hmm. you know, meeting new people, seeing new opportunities. And I enjoy that, you know, yeah, I'm going to do some media stuff. Mm -hmm. Already working with you, <laughs> having a lot of fun, yeah. you know. I love hanging around with you and John, and, and there's other opportunities when the project itself is fun, but it's mm -hmm. also about the people and have fun with the connections, and so that's what's next. Your connection with the Garden of Dreams and the Henrik Lundqvist Foundation, you know, those are things that have been deep rooted in your commitment to the city for a long time. You know? Yeah, I, I remember coming to New York and the Rangers and especially Garden Dreams Foundation really opened a door for me and gave me an understanding of how we can use our platform to help other people yeah. and to do good things and to use your, you know, your name, not only when it comes to money or resources, but to inspire other people to help. So mm -hmm. extremely rewarding yeah. to, to work with Garden Dreams Foundation and to start my own foundation. And Reflunkus Foundation, and both for me and my, my wife, our kids. It's a family. You know, for our kids you know? to grow up in the city, they see a lot. You know, they experience a lot, and I love that. Yep. I grew up in a small town, and I think <laughs> the world was this big. <laughs> to grow up here, and to different cultures and languages, and the world becomes so much bigger. Yeah. And the understanding for other people becomes so much bigger, but also to see people that might struggle and, and how we can help, mm -hmm. you know, to bring them on that journey as well. It's been very rewarding. And yeah, that's definitely something I'll spend more time on, develop and, yeah. and keep that interest. So it, it's pretty uh, cool too.
to just look back and, and think back of all the teammates I had and the remember we talked about it a lot how much fun we had i know we had it's so much fun as a, as a group and yeah. the things we did and when the team is winning it here how much no fun better place to be right it is a cool place to be and you know, i had no idea what i walked into right back in 2005. i think i only have one goal that's to make the team and I'm looking forward to this camp and be waiting all summer together so uh, it's fun to be here and uh, i'm excited Look, we all loved you as a teammate, and we're so proud of you. And congratulations with your honor on having the jersey raised. It's going to be electric. <laughs> Thank you, Ali. Thanks, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, guys? Well, I think that's it.